Hello gentle friends, welcome back. So the plan for today is to go on a bit of an adventure with some very questionable velvet. For a Xerophil's costume I need two pieces of fabric with a velveteen look to them. And one of them is the canyons which is kind of this section of the thigh here underneath the trunk hose puffy bits. So I only need a small piece for those and I need it in kind of a silvery pale blue silvery colour. Historically it would have either been velvet or fiskin, which the closest modern day equivalent to is moleskin cotton, and that's definitely an option just because it comes in a lot more colours than velvet does. But my local fabric shop had this offcut of questionable velvet, and I say questionable simply because of the amount of stretch in it, which leads me to suspect that the fibre content is at least significantly not cotton. It's not the right colour. I was hoping that it was in the fabric shop because the lighting's so bad, but when I took it into the light I knew it wasn't one. I, I checked it before I brought it and I knew it wasn't, but because it was only one euro, I'm willing to try dyeing it. So the first step is going to be to check the fibre content so I know what I need to buy. Then I'm going to need to bleach it because it's too dark for the colour I want. And then depending on how that turns out, I'm then going to need to over dye it. So if that sounds interesting to you, stick around and we shall see how this little adventure goes. So to test the velvet, we've gone on an adventure outside onto our balcony and I have cut off a tiny little piece off the corner because we're going to set fire to it. Woo! And that's why we're outside because safety first, children don't set fire to the house. Okay, so if this is cotton fibre, which is what we're hoping for, it's going to burn, well most fabrics are going to burn, and it may flare up. There's not going to be a melted bead because it's not plastic and it might smell like burning paper and with a grey or a white smoke and there will be some fine ash that will easily crumble whereas if it's plastic, which is what we're not hoping for, there will be a fine bead and it may smoulder as well so let's see what happens okay so well there's a lot of ash, ooh can you see that there? That is a good sign. And... Yeah, you probably can't see that, but there's some fine ash there, so that's promising. And most importantly, there's no hard bead. So, I would say that that's looking awfully like majority, at least, cotton, which is excellent. That makes me feel a lot better about using it and will make it a lot easier to first of all bleach and then to over dye as well because natural cottons, natural fibres are just a lot easier to deal with when dyeing. Okay so now that I've tested the fabric and I know that it's mostly cotton I can have a go at taking the colour off it. Now I went into the supermarket here and I didn't manage to find what I was looking for which was the Dyson one which I haven't tried before but I know about so I just grabbed what looked to be the same thing. There were two that were essentially the same. There's two options with these. Either you can do it in the washing machine or you can do it in a bucket. I'm going to give it a go in the bucket. With velvet, ideally you shouldn't be washing at high temperatures. And if I do it in the washing machine, I'm going to need 60 to 95 degrees. Now I could try that and see what happens. Obviously, you know, this is cheap material. I, if I wanted to, what I could actually do is cut that in half because I would still have enough and try both ways and see which way comes out better. But I think what I want to do first is try it in the bucket. So what I need to do is empty half of that packet into the bucket and then add six litres of warm water. I don't know why because it's going to end up cold by the end of this anyway. It says on this packet to leave it to 24 hours. Now on the other one I was looking it was basically as long as possible up to 24 hours. So I'm hoping that by darkness 
something will have happened. And then I can decide if I want to stick it in the bathroom overnight or if I'm going to leave it at that and what I'm going to do. So half of that packet into the bucket, warm water to six litres, give it a mix and then we'll stick that in and see what happens. I feel like I can see an instant change in the colour, but maybe that's just me being hopeful. So I'm going to now set a timer on that for a couple of hours. I need to stick a lid on that and then we'll see how this goes. Just in case anyone wasn't sure that spatula is now being sacrificed to the dying gods. So it's not going back into kitchen use. I will be buying my wife a replacement. Okay, so it's been roughly an hour. I say roughly, I know this because the laundry is now finished. And I'm surprised that the water is still warm. It has definitely lightened the fabric. We're now on this... We've gone from puke green to kind of mustard orange. Which is good. Like, that's kind of goldy, but I need silver. I won't be able to over dye that, so I'm gonna leave it for a while longer and see what happens. Well, obviously, because it's at 24 hours, so it does stink though, guys. It stinks so bad. This is definitely a summer project or an outside project if you do not have an outdoor space in your house. I don't recommend trying to take the colour off fabric. This is not pleasant. But yeah, that's your one hour update. We'll come back in a while. Mmm, that looks delicious! Smells it too! So we're now coming up on six hours. I don't think there's really been much of a change in the last couple of hours, to be honest. It's not really getting any lighter. I'm assuming that's because the water's gone cold. I'm just hoping if I leave it overnight, then... I was hoping I wouldn't have to leave it overnight, but it looks like I am going to have to. The fabric still seems okay. But what I have discovered is that you do need to make sure that it's completely submerged when you leave it, because it obviously oxidises very easily if there's any left. So you have to be careful of air bubbles and stuff and make sure that it's pressed down. I don't know if that's this colour remover in particular, or if all of them do it, but... So I'm going to leave that now for another four or five hours I would say. It's four o'clock now, yeah, so four hours and then we'll see how it is and either chuck it out then or in the morning. Probably in the morning but we'll see. This is what I meant by the dark spots if it doesn't go under. So it's now been, I don't know, I guess six or twelve hours. I don't think it's changed much since this morning. So, I'm, while I'm tempted to take it out now, I can't really do the washing anymore anyway, so I might as well leave it for another 12 hours and complete the experiment. So, I'm going to leave this overnight. Luckily there's a storm coming in, I wouldn't normally say that, but it means that it's not going to go under freezing tonight. So I'm going to give that one more stir. Uh, chuck it back outside because I can't really have it in outside overnight and then we'll have another look at it in the morning and see how it goes. So we're now coming up on 23 hours. It's a little under 24 hours but honestly looking at this it hasn't changed since it went cold essentially. I think 
I, I mean, the instructions definitely said not to keep it warm. They didn't mention keeping it warm, and they mentioned keeping it in a bucket, which you can't really keep warm. If I was doing it again, especially with this one, I don't know about other brands, I would definitely only keep it in there for until the water goes cold, and then either swap it out for a new batch if I want to get the colour lighter, which is what I might do with this, but I'm going to wash it out first. Or, yeah, there's just no point keeping it in the full length of time, so... I'm giving up on this now, it's been 23 hours, it's not changed since the first hour, it's not going to change any further, so I'm going to tip out as much water as I can, and then I'm going to wash it. I'm going to wash it on a couple of pre-cycles first, or at least one pre-cycle, because I want to get rid of as much of the crud as possible before I do a proper wash cycle, and then we'll pull it out, dry it, and see how it turned out. However it turned out, this has been a success because I know that it's not killed the fabric. Let's get this washed and see what comes of it. So washed and dried, here's the final result. I'm actually kind of shocked, to be honest, because it looks so yellow in the pot, and now it's finished. It's just more or less back to the same colour it was originally. It looked mustard yellow in the pot, and this is so green. So I'm not sure how that happened. The good news is that after, what was it, like four hours in the washing machine, you can smell it if you get really up close, but it smells not bad enough that I would be happy to use it and the velvet has taken a little bit of damage of course it has it always does when it gets washed but it's still totally usable this is still ever so slightly damp so it could do a little bit of drying and you're meant to steam rather than iron velvet but I don't have a steamer so I'm gonna iron it on the back and see what that does this is not light enough for me to use it for his trousers at all it's still too green in fact, it's even more green than it was before, so that's definitely not happening. So I've still got half a packet left, and I've got this velvet that I can't use for the costume. Okay, I could use it for something else, but I might as well give it another go. So that's the plan. I'm going to use up the remaining stuff, do this. I'm not going to do it for another 24 hours, I'm just going to do it while it's hot, so just during the day today. I'm actually going out, so what I'm going to do is do it now. When I come back, I'll check and see if the pot's still warm to the touch or if it's gone down to ambient temperature, which is about 10 degrees today. And if it's gone down, then I'll get rid of it. So it's not going to be checking in as much. This is just going to be one go through and see what happens. It will be interesting to see how much more smell it picks up because I've got rid of most of it. I haven't febrezed it or anything. I've just washed it. You can definitely still smell it if you get up close. So with just an hour, it'll be interesting to see if that brings it up a notch or if then washing it makes it actually less smelly than it is at the moment. So it's still going to be interesting to see what happens. So yes, we're just going to give this another go and see what happens. I find that really interesting. The second I've put it back in, it's gone straight back to that mustard colour. So it must be some sort of reaction, which makes me think that the dark spots from where it was exposed to the air weren't actually dark spots where it was oxidising, it's just going back to the actual colour, which means you could potentially use those to actually get a more accurate sense of what the colour is. It's already going yellow, so hopefully that means it's taking a little bit more dye out. We shall see. Okay, that seems to have sunk it. 
so we'll come back to that in a couple of hours and see what happens. Okay, it's been a couple of hours, the water is now cold. I can't see a difference in the colour, but since we know that this isn't going to be the colour again, I don't think that's a big deal. The water has gone yellow again, so I'm hoping that a little bit of dye has come out, but who knows? Who knows if even any dye came out in the first place, or if that's just the reaction between the fabric and the chemicals, whatever the chemicals are. But I'm going to get this washed again and see what happens. So, that was an adventure, let me tell you. This is the end result, and you might see there's not really a lot of difference. It is slightly lighter, I will give it that. I do actually like the colour more than original. It's slightly crunchy now, but I would say that's partly down to my washing machine, because on the last wash it decided not to wash it properly, so that's probably going to get fixed with another wash. But since I did four washes yesterday on it, I don't really want to do another one. I can definitely still smell it. It does smell more of laundry liquid at the moment, but I think that's partly, like I said the last time, it decided not to play game. So the question then becomes, why am I still showing this if that was a disaster? Two reasons. One, I wouldn't call that a disaster. I can't use it in the project that I'm doing, but it's still perfectly usable for something else. Two, I have done this experiment so you guys don't have to. We've discovered two things along the journey. A, it is safe to try it on velvet. Although this is stretch velvet and not 100%, so it's got, even though it's mostly cotton, there is something else in there. So we have to take that with a pinch of salt, but we know that on that it is safe to do it. Two, we know that it's not worth doing it, so I can save you buying the stuff yourself and going through it yourself. I think that having gone through the internet and looked up some reviews and done some more research later, I think the answer is with that stuff is that it works excellent on very specific fabrics. Those fabrics tend to be the ones that come in the highest different varieties of colour anyway. For me, if I'm dyeing, it's because I can't get it the colour that I want. And if I'm buying something specifically to dye it, I will always go for a lighter colour and over dye it. Now, I realise that like this, more or less, sometimes you have something in your stash that is perfect and you want to try and get rid of the colour so you can then over dye it, and that does happen too. And if that's the case, I think that stuff is worth giving it a go. However, a couple of caveats. In an aired room, I would say 99% unless you've got a garage or something that you don't actually use, do it outside. That stuff stinks. You need to make sure that you have the tools accessible and you're not going to be using them for anything else as well. That bucket is now stained. I'm very glad that I didn't try to do it over the stove top to keep the temperature up or anything like that. I'm also really glad I didn't try and do it in the washing machine, to be honest, which was an option. And I would have done if it hadn't been velvet, probably. But I can't imagine how many goes around it would have taken to get that out. I would have been scared to do my laundry in it afterwards. And a stick to stir it with as well is also important. So all of those things you need to have prepared, you need to know what you're doing and you need to do it outside. So doing it in the winter, which is what I've done, not the best idea. For me, doing an experiment like this is worth it even for the negative results because you still find out how things work along the way, even if the things that you find out is that this doesn't work. That's still an interesting result. I just think it's quite interesting to see what can be done with fabric. I actually really like the colour that it's set at the moment, so in a future project I'll be happy to use it. If I needed something darker I would be happy to over dye. That's the other thing. So now I know that this takes anti-dye, I'm pretty confident that it will take dye fairly safely. Because if that hasn't wrecked it then dye should be fine. So if I do want to darken it to a different colour, say something closer to black, then I could do that later on. I am quite happy with this experiment. I hope you found it interesting, at the very least. I realise it's a slight abbreviation from normal, but like I said, we're experimenting together, you guys virtually, me in real life, so that you can make decisions, informed decisions, on what you want to do with your fabric at home. So that's that. 
let me know what experience you guys have had with dyeing or removing dye from fabrics and how they went. Did you have more success than I did? I have had a lot more success with dyeing, I have to say. Normally when I dye it comes out pretty much the colour that I want, so I've been really lucky with dyeing in the past. Thank you for watching, leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and please subscribe if you haven't done. Thank you to everyone who is subscribed already, and thank you to everyone who sat through the whole thing. And I shall see you again in the near future. Bye guys!